Good day, everyone. My name is Ben Roy Chasen. I'm a student at Centennial College's Game Development Program, and I'd like to talk a bit more about vehicle design in video games. Vehicle design is a relatively new and incredibly complicated discipline, combining multiple fields of engineering, science, and ergonomics into one elaborate field of study. While mechanical reliability was a more pressing concern for automotives up until the early 20th century, leading to some conventional but rather tame designs, over the decades, aesthetics became a luxury, growing on demand of its own, and became an effective marketing tool, a fact that still stands today. In spite of this, everyone still wants a functional and comfortable vehicle, no? <laughs> Once we dive into the realm of video games, however, the field of vehicle design takes on a new form, as in this plane of pure imagination, confined only by zeros and ones, we are freed from the shackles of mechanical reliability, construction costs, and all that common sense. The freedom this medium provides has allowed us to experience a whole spectrum of vehicle designs, from the most down-to-earth, to ones so out there and exotic they probably will never exist in our world. Rinky-dink go-kart? Duh. Tanks, you bet. Spaceship, of course. Six-legged mecha monster thingy. <laughs> the designs of vehicles are as varied as the hundreds and thousands of games that they come from, all tailored to their game's own unique aesthetics. However, a well-made vehicle both in aesthetics and design, regardless of its actual usage in-game, can make a game's world feel all the more believable and immersive even more so when the machine itself is used as a vehicle for the player to interact with and impact the game world. But given the sheer depth of this topic, how would we artists and 3D modelers alike get a grasp of it? Some spend years and even decades mastering this craft. Most of us probably don't have the time to fully cover such a different and expansive field of study, but we can have at least some surface level know-how to arm ourselves. So without further ado, let's roll out into the world of video game vehicle design. Before we actually pull out the pencil and paper and design a vehicle, we need to understand everything about the vehicle that we're designing, as well as the aesthetic and theme for which the vehicle is being made. The only way to do this is research. Research, research. Copious amounts of research. Find out anything and everything about the vehicles you want to design, and get into the nitty gritty of the designs whenever and wherever necessary. Some things to consider are, what kind of vehicle is it? A car, a tracked vehicle, something that runs on rails, a mech, and by extension, what role is it designed for? Transporting passengers, mass transport, or small scale? Cargo, how much cargo is it made to transport? Perhaps it serves mainly in the military, in which case does it serve in frontline combat or backline support? What era is it made for? Or what technology is available for that era of the world? Is it medieval high fantasy, futuristic sci-fi, post-apocalyptic? 20th or 21st century low fantasy tech? Who is going to be manufacturing this vehicle? And what available resources and materials do they have at their disposal to do this? The who primarily refers to place of origin, but also the aspect of life for whom it is being manufactured. Different groups of people might require different means, either due to terrain, material availability, etc. etc. Consequently, will the available materials and technologies used to construct the vehicle allow the vehicle to perform its intended role? Who is going to be operating this vehicle? Humans? Humanoids? Non-humanoids? Does it forego an operator entirely and uses artificial intelligence instead of some kind? Find as many references as you can with vehicles that perform the same or at least similar roles to the vehicle you want to design, as long as you think the design choices make sense in regards to your game's visual or narrative aesthetic. Using fictional or non-fictional vehicles shouldn't matter. Gathering references will help you learn about particular design features that make vehicles proficient in serving a particular role, as well as those that do not. While you are designing a vehicle, you need to keep it within the aesthetic and thematic constraints of the game. 
you should consider several aspects of the game itself including, but not limited to, in what style is the game depicted in? Is it realistic, stylized, cartoonish? This is important as we do not want any conceptual nor visual disconnect between the vehicle designs and the game for which we are making them. How visible will the vehicle and its components be from the player's point of view? Your vehicle will need to be drawn accordingly, so it is best to know beforehand what level of detail you can afford to have. Typically, the smaller the vehicle appears to the player, the less detail will be required. What are the common design features of a vehicle? The designed vehicle should be consistent with a particular theme, whether it be faction, the lore, and game setting, or all of the above. One of the first things to consider is, obviously, the game itself. For the most part, you are designing a vehicle for the game, not a game around the vehicle. Thus, it is important to find a balance between a vehicle's aesthetic and sticking to what semblance of common sense still exists. Speaking of that, Regardless if your vehicle is supposed to be represented in a cartoonish style or be some hyper-realistic engineer simulator, your design needs to be as kept as believable as possible. People will still try to subconsciously figure out how your vehicle works even if it's supposed to be completely foreign in design, and some will even actively try to pick apart the design. Thus, the least we as designers can do is make the vehicle be as sensible as can be, regardless of what the vehicle actually is. There are a few universal elements that should be present in any vehicle that is made, including, but not limited to, a vehicle should optimally have, at least relatively, easily accessible entry and exit points for either operators, passengers, and or cargo. A vehicle should have space for said operators, passengers, and or cargo. Civilian and recreational vehicles typically have more free space for passengers and or cargo. It should have some space for a power plant to propel its method of locomotion. Typically, the heavier and or larger a vehicle is, or the faster it is intended to go, more space for said power plant is typically needed. Power plant size itself depends on its fuel and how the potential energy stored in it is converted into kinetic energy. Is it by battery cells, liquid fuel like petrol or diesel, magic crystals perhaps? The operators should be able to see outside of the vehicle. How much vision is available will depend on what kind of vehicle it is. For example, in a tank, it will be a bit more limited, whereas in a civilian vehicle, there will be a lot more viewing ports. Additionally, a vehicle's design, especially its silhouette, should be easily identifiable with its designated role, and features that are visible on the vehicle's exterior should allow, or at the very least appear to allow, the vehicle to perform in the roles for which it is designed for. Typically, the larger and or more obvious the feature, the more relevant to the vehicle's performance it should be. For example, a traditional truck will typically have some large space in the rear, relative to the truck's size, for cargo storage, as well as having a large, rather boxy and or chunky cabin shape for the driver. A wheel-based off-road vehicle will have larger wheels relative to its frame and or much more prominent treads compared to other road-based automobiles, an extreme example of this being monster trucks. Additionally, the suspension of this vehicle type typically has more distance from the chassis than regular road-based vehicles, an excellent example being Halo's M12 FAV, better known as a Warthog. The vice versa of this principle is also applicable. The more relevant a feature is to a vehicle's performance, the more obvious it should be. Say, if a vehicle has a particularly powerful engine that grants a very high speed or high power-to-weight ratio, typically this takes the form of having a larger engine. However, if the game you're working on has a more stylized art style or has a more fantastical element to it, some of the realism will be compromised and that is fine, as long as the design choices that we have made still make some sense in the overall scheme of the vehicle. In relation to this, I brought up earlier that vehicles should adhere to a common theme. This goes for both the design and the way it is represented visually. A common instance in video games is factions or nations. In these cases, each side should have a common design theme amongst their vehicles. This helps the players on either side easily identify friend from foe, which is consequently more information the player can work with. To use Halo as an example again, the UNSC vehicles employ many traditional vehicle design elements familiar to us humans despite being significantly more futuristic, and typically have more angular shapes that reflect their earthly origins, artificial and rigid. Meanwhile, the Covenant, a highly advanced alien race with technology surpassing ours by hundreds of years, have much more unorthodox designs, which reflects their alien doctrine and technology. They radiate a far more futuristic and foreign vibe, 
Their designs are dominated by smooth, rounded shapes and organic silhouettes. In fact, some of their designs seem to be heavily inspired by animal features. Again, it is good for us to keep ourselves aware to the reality that we are designing this vehicle for a game and not the other way around. Unless the game is made to be some kind of vehicle simulator, we should prioritize having a visually appealing design before having one design with reasonability and feasibility in mind. I mean, look at the at, -AT. that thing looks impractical beyond common sense, I don't even know how that tiny engine powers those legs, but it still looks so god darn awesome. Hence, depending on what your game setting is and what art style you are going for, it is perfectly okay to sacrifice some common sense for the visual wow factor. I've been yapping purely about the design of vehicles for quite a bit now, but what about the people inside that allow the vehicle to do what it does? Having sufficient space for a vehicle's crew to work effectively and efficiently is important, if we want the vehicle to be usable at all. Even if our game only shows the exterior of the vehicle, the vehicle still should be large enough so that there's enough space inside of it that the crew can at least move some of their upper torso and maybe feet and legs in a limited capacity. In vehicles with very limited space to ambulate, such as a tank or a mech, where most of the interior is occupied by thick armor and numerous pieces of equipment, space to move becomes even more crucial, especially in vehicles that require multiple crew members. To use a mech as an example, most mechs like ones in Mech Warrior and Battletech usually only need to design space more on one pilot, but given the even more limited amount of space in a humanoid shaped machine, it usually comes down to the size of the mech, design of the mech, and the placement of the pilot to determine how much space is available for the mech pilot. Titanfall 2's Atlas mech is only large enough to fit just one person in its relatively cramped cockpit, whereas if the mechs are Pacific Rim sized absolute units, then more than one pilot should be possible, like Battletech's Super Heavy Battle mechs, which houses a whopping three pilots. It is imperative that we take into account the anatomy of who or what is crewing the vehicle, in particular their anatomy. In tandem with having enough space for them to move as we just stipulated, the space should also be designed around being as ergonomical to their bodies as possible to maximize their ability to operate the vehicle. While usually we only need to design around human body shapes, chances are that we will have to design around different species as body types if they are present. In spite of me saying this, having to design space within a vehicle for varying body types will depend on the context of the vehicle's construction. When it comes to civilian-based or recreational vehicles, if your game has various humanoids with different body shapes coexisting, different designs of vehicles that are inclusive to various humanoid body types may exist. For example, Zootopia's many, many car designs to fit their different animal species. In this case, you can freely design the vehicle interior space around the bodies of their expected users. However, militaries typically standardize their equipment and typically do not care for civilian details. So if someone can't fit into the tank, tough luck. Plus, the interior is usually packed with equipment too. Because of that, when designing military vehicles, you shouldn't look at every demographic of the population, but only design crew spaces around the average physique of those enlisted. There's a reason why some tanks and fighter jets in real life have maximum height stipulations due to how cramped they are. In some settings, vehicles have some form of remotely controlled components or are controlled by artificial intelligence, either partially or entirely. In these cases, you do not need to account for a separate body operator within compartments utilizing remote control or AI. Typically, these spaces are only occupied with the necessary components to perform the function it was intended to, and are thus on average smaller than their operator crew counterparts. However, this option is usually restricted to either modern settings or sci-fi slash magical settings. For example, the Land Raiders machine spirit in Warhammer 40k's universe. So do tread lightly with the idea of AI or remote control in vehicles. Alas, it seems like my time is up here. There's a lot more of the vehicle design that I'd like to cover. I haven't even gotten to the intricacies of airborne vehicles and watercraft such as warships, but alas this video will probably be close to an hour long. Nevertheless, here are some thoughts to consider when you are designing your next vehicle for your game. You never know what other vehicle inspirations you could gather from your research. 
so I encourage you to do some deep dives yourself. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.